Hello, and welcome to this video, which is about the multiband imager, which is included with Cubase 11. Controlling the width of stereo material is an important part of music production. Whether it's limiting the width of low frequency or adding extra width to high frequency content, this is a daily part of modern music production workflow. So let's look at how Steinberg have decided to attack it. So here you can see the Imager plugin and it's been inserted on a track which has just got a simple drum loop. Again, this is just from the Loop Masters Welcome Pack, so something that you can get hold of pretty easily yourself. And let's just have a listen to that drum loop without anything added to it. So you get the idea. And importantly here, we can see the controls and display you have available to you. So this is the frequency display where the multiple bands will appear as we add extra bands. We've got this display here, which shows you the pan and phase correlation of the band in question. So at the moment, this is across the entire track. And we can see there's some stereo information happening. We've got the width control, the pan and output, which will come into play later on. So firstly, width. So we can just reduce this. So just on this simple drum loop, if we reduce it down to zero, we end up with a mono version. And you can hopefully hear that. It's probably best to listen on headphones. And you really feel that just compressed down to the center. Back to 100% progressively. And now we can take it over that 100% and you'll see the width increase here. And that, that gets a point for me, certainly, uh, on this particular loop, about 150%, where it's, it's probably a bit wide. And it sounds to sound a bit weird. But the great thing about this is, like these other plugins, we can just add in an extra band. So if you've got the hang of that, which should be fairly simple, you can just add in extra bands. We can change the frequency at which we're dividing these up. So in this case, we're going to have three bands. And we can do the traditional thing of not much width, low down, so let's say 33%, we'll have, let's say 100% in the mid band, and then the top end, we're just going to open that up. So let's go to about 140%. And now, so that's with it on, and then I'm going to turn it off. So you can probably hear, again, if you're listening on headphones in particular, you'll probably hear that's a bit wider, it's a bit more interesting, and also we've got control of the bottom end. So as we see here, this has been made to be mono, low down, and if we open it up to 100% as it was, it wasn't far off anyway. So we're just making sure we haven't got anything errant going on, low down, but as we get further up the frequency band, we're getting wider and so on. We've got the ability to move things around, so you could move bottom end over to the left, or over to the right, etc. So you can do some wacky and interesting things as well. So you can play around with the stereo image per frequency band and so on. Finally, you've got output controls. They're fairly straightforward, so you can adjust those to make sure you're getting the balance that you want. So you've got some shaping as well as imaging that you can do here. Now, let's take a look at this on a track and we'll just look at some of the presets. So I've picked out a couple of bits out of this old release. So on this particular one, we've got the beginning of the track where there isn't much going on stereo wise. So here we are on a preset, which is four bands, but they're all set at 100%. So you're just going to be seeing what's happening. And we can see that actually there's really not much stereo information here at all. The only place where we've really got some is in this low mid band. And that's probably been added by the reverb. So if we turn the width of this up, so it'll really accent it. You can hear that, that reverb sound, the low dull reverb sound is getting much wider. And in some cases, that'd be exactly what you'd be after. Now, as you can see, you can solo each of these bands individually as well, as you'd imagine with any kind of plugin like this. Which in itself can be an effect as well. And
we can turn off their effect as well. So at the moment, they're not doing anything because they are at 100%. But let's set this to 200%. And if you quickly want to bypass that, you can turn it off and it takes it back to effectively 100%, zero pan and zero output change. Now let's look at some of these presets. So for instance, we've got upside down. So this is quite interesting. So again, if you're listening on headphones, certainly to me, that sounds quite weird. So we've got a combination of generally reduced width, apart from in the low end where it's increased. And you can see we've actually got some stereo information and then the pan, which is tilting this. And it's, it's sounding quite odd. Certainly to me on headphones, that's quite unsettling. It feels like when you have sounds which are out of phase in one co headphone compared to the other. Uh, because we haven't got much going on in this part of the song, I'm going to move to a different place instead. So later on, there is some stereo information. And as we'll see here, even without any changes, you can see what's happening in the different bands. And we see the stereo come in here. So you can see that spread in as the sounds come in. And generally, we've got less panning, less stereo width happening low down and more high up. And often, you want to accentuate that. So here we are, four bands wider top, which are just plugged in, where we've got low bottom end and high at the top end. And you can hear the difference between that and without. So it's certainly not night and day, but it's a subtle improvement in the stereo imaging and there's a bit more width and so on in there. So you can see that unusually for one of these plugins, there aren't that many presets. These three are ones that I've put in, but generally we've only got nine, nine different presets. So there's only nine to play around with. And that's, that's perfectly fine because this isn't really a kind of preset driven plugin. You're probably going to be able to just listen to it the controls are fairly simple, but typically it'll be fairly easy to adjust the width to suit the kind of work that you want. And often, I say, generally, the low end will want to be narrower and the high end will want to be wider. But having the addition of the pan control makes this quite useful and a good way to manipulate in creative ways as well as things that will fit in a mix. So there you have it. Imager is a workmanlike but useful plugin which does a daily job in a fairly straightforward way. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please consider liking and subscribing for more music tech tuition. We'll see you again soon.